At the height of the Cold War, Boeing, Airbus and other manufacturers were not only competing with each other, but also with the might of the Soviet aviation industry. But how did the two sides compare, and what were their aircraft like? When it came to aircraft, Soviet-era planes followed the critical design principle set by Andrei Tupolev, designing aircraft for both civil and military use. Thus, most airframes from the era seemed less for passengers and more for troop transport. This was mostly the case until 1972, when the Tu-154 arrived on the scene. At the beginning of the jet age, the Soviet Union brought to the market the Tu-104 against the de Havilland Comet. 200 of these jets would be built, and it would be the main Russian civil carrier until 1972. With three times the range, the Boeing 707 would outclass the aircraft in 1954. The 707 was also more accessible to purchase for Western markets. The Soviet Union would go on to produce more aircraft for the state-run airline Aeroflot, many that would replicate features of well-known Western aircraft. Here is a simple list of several Soviet aircraft and their Western counterparts, if applicable. The Tupolev Tu-104 was a competitor to the de Havilland Comet. The Tupolev Tu-114 was a propeller aircraft that could fly almost as fast as a 707. With a 200-passenger capacity, it typically carried 170 and had a dining area with sleeping berths for passengers. The Tupolev Tu-124 carried around 56 passengers and served as a regional jet, its best compared to the Boeing 717. The Tupolev Tu-134 was the first to have international recognition and used by Aeroflot for most of its routes to Europe. It could carry 84 passengers to a range of 3,000 kilometers or 1,600 nautical miles. Simply put, the Tupolev Tu-144 was the competitor to the Concorde. The Tupolev Tu-154 competed with the Boeing 707, carrying up to 180 passengers to a range of 6,600 kilometers or 3,600 nautical miles. Ilyushin made larger aircraft, and the IL-62 was the first. It was designed to rival the long-range potential of the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8, carrying 186 passengers around 10,000 kilometers or 5,400 nautical miles. The Ilyushin IL-86 could carry 320 passengers to a range of 5,000 kilometers or 2,700 nautical miles. This aircraft was to rival the Airbus A330. The Ilyushin IL-96 was a replacement for the Dash 86 and designed to rival the Airbus A340, carrying 300 to 420 passengers up to a range of 11,500 kilometers or 6,209 nautical miles. Finally, there's the Yak-40. This aircraft would be the world's second trijet after the Hawker Siddeley Trident. It could carry 32 passengers to a range of 1,800 kilometers or 970 nautical miles. There isn't a direct Western comparison apart from a small Embraer aircraft. Yakovlev would go on to create a new aircraft to replace the Yak-40. The Yak-42 would carry 120 passengers to a range of 4,000 kilometers or 2,200 nautical miles. The world of Soviet-era aircraft is a fascinating one, and we've barely scratched the surface in this video. The key takeaway is that many of the Soviet aircraft either copied Western designs, or in the case of a trijet, inspired others. Would you ever want to fly in a Russian or Soviet-built aircraft? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.